Good evening, class of 2010. Before I commence my speech, I'd first like to thank uh, my family, especially my aunt and uncle who came down from California, and my grandparents who flew from halfway around the world. I would also like to thank my friends and my academic adjudicators. Without any of you, I would not be where I am today. Thank you, because without your help, I would not have been given this chance to represent the class with a lengthy speech comprised of highly personal anecdotes, a chance I now plan to take full advantage of. <laughs> now, I realize that some of you do not care for what I'm about to say, so I invited Nathan Turner up here to enhance this experience with some mood-setting music. Some mood setting music. This should accommodate your ears so that as you get bored and zone in and out of listening to my speech, all you'll be able to hear is the soothing sound of the guitar. Okay, so to start, I show you the beginning of freshman year. I believe this Rubik's Cube is, represents our freshman year very well because our freshman year was a puzzle. It wasn't too long ago when the puzzle of entering high school was presented before you. And mo most of us were nervous, anxious, or scared. And questions like, how am I going to fit in, filled our heads. And we became more concerned with what we wore and who we hung out with, and less concerned about who has more Pokemon cards. <laughs> I don't know about that one. It was a puzzle because, just like the Rubik's Cube, you can turn it around, you just can't turn it around in any unplanned direction. Otherwise, it's just going to get more mixed up, mixed up. So, you have to start matching colors. You have to know what's going on where, who's dating who. And by the time freshman year is almost over, you've, almost, you've solved part of your Rubik's Cube. But you still have a long way to go. Now, sophomore year was kind of a blur. Hold on one second. <laughs> okay, that works. Now sophomore year was kind of a blur. You now know what's going on in high school, but you're still an underclassman, so you, there's not, nothing much going on. Time passed quickly, and everything was drowned out by the freshman's wine and the upperclassman's authority. So, when we piece all the parts of sophomore year together, it creates a rather hazy, fragmented memory that kind of feels like... And then he just tried crying all over the place, so I did what anyone else would do. Now, I was already late, and my pants were still not dry, so I decided to get creative And thus, we coast through sophomore year, leaving ourselves to wonder what really happened. Yet we managed to solve more of the Rubik's Cube. And then junior year. <laughs> you're finally an upperclassman, and you're now entitled to a lot more power to influence the school. You are becoming more of a leader than a follower, but you soon realize that it just gets much harder from here. More AP classes are available. The IB program begins. Coaches rely on you more. Underclassmen begin to look up to you. And you're finally allowed to go to prom. It's all fun until you begin to realize what the, responsi the responsibility that's been given to you. And you have to be careful what you do because any wrong move can send you back to square one. Every move you make has to be just right so that the last year in high school will be simple. Now, if you've set it up right, senior year wouldn't be as complicated as your previous three, because most of you don't even have a fourth period. But there is one thing, one important thing, that you need to get out of the way before you leave, and I think I can best describe this through the words of Lance Jabber. So imagine that you're a single guy, and you decide that it's time to start thinking about getting married. But you're still young, 
you don't want to rush into anything. So you spend years trying to find the perfect girl. Every chance you get, you travel all over the country try, just to try and meet new people. Some you like more than others. Some are too nerdy, while others party too much. But finally, after all your searching, you think you find the perfect one. Oh, she's incredible. She's fun, smart, sexy, everything you wanted in a woman. And you decide to propose. But you only get one shot, and you can't screw it up. So you spend months agonizing on how you're going to do it. What you're going to say to her. You set a deadline for yourself so that you can't put it off forever. And as the deadline appro approaches, you begin to get nervous. You, are you good enough? Oh, it feels as though everything you've been doing in your life has been leading up to this moment. Finally, the deadline is here. Oh, yo, you're so nervous. She's way out of your league. Is the ring big enough? How many mistakes have you made so far? Is it too late to go back? And then it's over. You've submitted your proposal and there's nothing more you can do. She looks at you and she says, mm, let, me get, let me get back to you in like four months. <laughs> That's pretty much what applying to college is like. And you know what? She'll probably say no. But guess what you didn't tell her? You proposed to a bunch of backup chicks just in case she rejected you. <laughs> and they're all begging to come marry you instead. Well, now that college is just around the corner, all you have to do is just turn those few sides. One second. And you finally solve your Rubik's Cube. So now it's time to say goodbye to high school and say hello to college. <laughs> so now that we're done with high school, it's time to look ahead into the future. A few years from now, we're going to look back at these high school years and talk about our accomplishments and all the ridiculous things we've had to do. We'll all probably laugh about all the stuff we've done and said, while we were still in high school. And then just remember, you gotta just remember. As we go on, we remember all the times we had together. And as our lives change from whatever, we will still be. Friends forever, yeah! <laughs> the only thing left to say now is congratulations to the Westall High School class of 2010 and to those who helped us get here.